Welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland. I'm glad to see you here. On the 1st of February 2022, I shared with you my personal expense tracker and a guide on how to use it. It's a nifty way of saving more money and guiding yourself to a better financial position. If you haven't already watched it, I added the link to the description box below and you will find it in a little info button at the top right corner. Don't forget to check out that video as well and download the free Power BI report. While the original tutorial is focusing on how to use the report, I promise to record a few other, hopefully, shorter videos about how the sausage was made. And this is going to be one of those how-to tutorials. In other words, over the next few videos, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks that I used in the expense tracker report, stuff that you can easily replicate in your reports to make your life easier and to make your report consumer's life simpler. These tips are not limited to the expense tracker, I'm just going to use that report as an example. And if you get value out of these tips, please consider clicking on the like and subscribe buttons. It helps to spread the word about some of these cool little features in Power BI. Thanks heaps! In today's episode, I would like to cover how to parameterize Power Query to easily change bits in the M code in multiple queries at the same time. So without further ado, Let's hop over to Power BI. Let's start by exploring the end result. If I click on Transform Data and Edit Parameters, a pop-up shows up with the file location. Here I can easily change the folder where my data sits, in this example on Excel file. Once I make the change here, within this pop-up, all my queries are going to adjust. All of this within a click of a button. This is great as I don't have to worry about report users needing to know how to adjust the M code. They can do all of this via clickable UI rather than finding the right line in the code. It also helps with the handover process to someone else, let's say giving a report to a business to use and maintain once it was developed or creating a company-wide template to be easily used across multiple divisions, countries, etc. So, how can we set this up and what can be parameterized in Power Query? To answer this, let's open Power Query. You see, I have three queries on the top and the file location parameter on the bottom. Adding a new parameter to your report is super easy. Just click on Manage Parameters and then New Parameter. In this pop-up, you can name the parameter itself which I would suggest doing immediately and try to give a very descriptive name to the parameter. You can also add a more detailed description to the box below and select data type. If you want, you can switch from any value to a list of values. This is super handy if you have a predefined list of values that users should be able to switch between. Or you can also use a query as a suggested value. To be honest, most of the time I either use any value or list of values in my reports where flexibility is needed. And lastly, you need to add a current value to this parameter. Instead of saving this new parameter, let's jump back to my file location parameter so I can show what does it look like. Now that we have our parameter, how can we use it? Let's open up my report query and click on advanced editor. Have a look at the second line where I define the source. As I mentioned, for this demo I use an Excel file picked up from a folder. But instead of hard coding the folder location, I use the file location parameter and then combine it with a slash and the file name itself. This helps me to be 100% sure that once I share this report with others, they can easily switch folders without the need of adjusting the code here. And in all those queries where I reference the file location. While this may not be scary to you, I can guarantee that for many business users, it would be a little bit overwhelming. The best part with parameters is that almost anything can be listed as a parameter in Power Query. Another example that I use on a daily basis is a date filter. Let's say I want to explore data from a data flow, but I don't need to import long historical details. I can easily create a date from parameter to limit the amount of data used during this process. Have a look at this example. I added the date from parameter here, and as a default value I used 1st of January 2022. If I head over to my report query again, I can utilize this parameter as a filter argument. 
click on date, date filters, and after in the pop-up filter menu, switch from a date to a parameter and select date from. Hit OK and my query is now filtered to dates after the 1st of January. As I mentioned before, lots of things can be parameterized in Power Query to help you, a report developer, and make your reports user's life easier when it comes to utilizing a report. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's tutorial and you will be able to replicate it in your reports. If you haven't already watched it, make sure to check out the personal expense tracker video and download the free report. And don't forget to hit those magic buttons under this video.